Let's learn about intracranial herniation syndromes. My name is Dr. Aishwarya. Intracranial herniation is broadly divided into subfalcine herniation, transtentorial herniation, which is then further divided into ascending transtentorial and descending transtentorial herniation. Then there is tonsillar herniation. Transalar herniation is a rare entity. Briefly about extracranial herniation syndromes which is when meninges and parenchyma of brain herniate through the calvarial defect. Let's look into the relevant anatomy for better understanding of herniation syndromes. First are the dural infoldings, phax cerebris anteriorly attached to cresta galli and posteriorly it's attached to tentorium cerebelli. Next is the tentorium cerebelli. It begins posteriorly from the confluence with Fark cerebri and extends inferiorly and laterally to attach to base of skull. The opening in the tentorium is called as incisura. It contains midbrain and cerebral peduncles within the opening. On T2 coronal images, we can see Fark cerebri dividing cerebrum into right and left hemispheres and tentorium dividing supratentorial and infratentorial region. The gyri just below the phax and just above the corpus callosum is called cingulate gyrus and this is the uncus of temporal lobe. Now we see the incisura of the tentorium cerebelli. On sagittal sections of T2, we can see the midbrain, pons and the medulla, the corpus callosum, the cingulate gyrus. Posterior inferior to cerebellum, we can see cisterna magna. Superior to cerebellum, we can see supracerebellar cistern. Posterior to midbrain, we have quadrigeminal cistern. Anterior to midbrain, we have interpeduncular cistern. Anterior to the pons, as the name suggests, we have prepontine cistern. And medullary cistern in front of the medulla. On axial T2 sections, we can see the uncus of temporal lobe and the parahippocampal gyrus. Let's see the basal cisterns on axial imaging. This is the interpeduncular cistern, anterior to midbrain. This is the crural cistern, the perimesencephalic cistern and the quadrigeminal cistern. Now let's look at how to approach and diagnose case of intracranial herniation. Clinical history is important. Look for any neurological deterioration. As we discuss the anatomy, look for all the anatomical landmarks. Identify the pathology causing mass effect and the direction of the mass effect. Then identify the structure which is displaced. There can be direct signs indicating it or the indirect signs which we will discuss further in our lecture. Last but not the least. Look at the hernia related complications. Let's discuss each herniation syndrome in detail. First is a subfalcine hernia also known as midline shift. There will be unilateral pathology which will be causing mass effect. What happens in this is that the cingulate gyrus which is directly under the fox cerebra is pushed towards the contralateral side and it is better visualized on coronal CT images. How to measure the midline shift? Take an axial section at the level of foramen of Munro, draw a line anterior to posterior and measure the distance from this line to the septum pellucidum. More than 5 mm midline shift is clinically significant and has poor prognosis. Indirect signs of subfalcine herniation are effacement of ipsilateral ventricles and dilatation of the contralateral ventricles. Now what are the complications of subfalcine hernia? There can be focal necrosis of cingulate gyrus. There can be compression of anterior cerebral artery and cause infarction in the territory. Moving on to descending transtentorial herniation, there will be pathology in supratentorial region causing mass effect. It's subdivided into lateral type and central type of descending herniation. Lateral type is when medial temporal lobe is herniated further divided into anterior and posterior type. Anterior type uncus is herniated, posterior type parahippocampal gyrus is herniated and in central type the midbrain and the pons are displaced inferiorly. In anterior subtype there will be uncal herniation which will efface the supracellar and the crural cistern of the same side 
there will be widening of perimesin cephalic cistern on the same side. In posterior subtype, parahippocampal gyrus is herniated, effacing the basal cisterns. Next is the central herniation type, in which there is inferior displacement of midbrain and pons. There will be effacement of perimesin cephalic cistern, which is an important point. Complication of this type of hernia, there can be compression of third cranial nerve, posterior cerebral artery, midbrain, etc. There can be hydrocephalus. The turret hemorrhages are caused because of stretching and shearing of perforating branches of basilar artery. Next set of complications, Kernohan notch phenomenon can occur in which for example right uncle herniation happens. The opposite side cerebral peduncle is compressed against the tentorium. The descending corticospinal tracts are affected on that side and there will be motor weakness on the same side of the lesion. That is on right side and this causes false localization. Next is the ascending transtentorial hernia pathology causing mass effect is located in posterior fossa. There will be upward displacement or herniation of vermis through the tentorium. Hence there will be anterior displacement of midbrain. Because of anterior displacement of midbrain, the midbrain will take up the shape of a spinning top configuration. Complications of ascending hernia, they can be hydrocephalus, they can be compression of superior cerebellar artery or posterior cerebral arteries. Next is the tonsillar hernia where the mass effect causing pathology is located in posterior fossa. Let's draw the McRae's line or the foramen magnum line and the herniated tonsils in this is situated 5 mm below the foramen magnum. This was the direct sign and indirect signs of tonsillar hernia are effacement of fourth ventricle and effacement of basal systems. At last, we'll discuss the rare trans alar herniation. The reference anatomical point for this is the spinoid ridge, which is located towards right and left of the midline. This is the spinoid ridge on the left side. So descending type of trans alar herniation is when the frontal lobe herniates or is displaced posterior inferiorly. This causes compression of MCA. And in the ascending type of trans alar herniation, the temporal lobe is displaced or herniated supero anteriorly. This can cause compression of supraclinoid ice. We had an interesting case of intracranial herniation where there was effacement of perimesin cephalic cistern, that is, central type of descending hernia. Next, tonsillar herniation was there in the same patient. Also, there was one of the complication of herniation syndromes that is PCA territory infarct. To summarize, herniation of cingulate gyrus is subfalcine hernia, medial temporal lobe is lateral descending transtentorial hernia, central descending type where midbrain and pons is displaced inferiorly and tonsils are herniated in tonsillar hernia. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to our channel and comment if you need any more videos on radiology topics.